Hello guys and welcome back. Thank you, Jed. Today on the CWN, we are learning about the cell theory. One of the greatest things about science is when the scientists make a discovery. It's not always a prescribed manner, as if only laboratory under strict settings with light with white lab coats, all of some sort of neat science cases that go beep. In reality, the event people involved in some of matter scientific discoveries are as weird as varied as they get. My case in point, the weird history of the cell theory. There are three parts to the cell theory. One, all the organisms are composed of one or more cells. Two, the cell is the basic unit of the structure. Three, all the cells come from pre-existing cells. To be honest, this all sounds incredibly boring until you dig a little deeper into how the world of microscopic theory and theories came to be. It all started in the early 1600s in the Netherlands, where a spiritual maker named Zacharias Jan Janssen is said to have come up with the first compound microscope, along with the first telescope. Both claims are often disputed, as apparently he wasn't the only bored guy with a ton of glass lenses to play at the time. Despite this, it, the microscope soon became a hot item that every naturalist or scientist all the time wanted to play with, they, making it much like the iPad of its, okay, of its day. One such person was a fellow Dutchman by the name of Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who heard about these microscope doohickeys. Instead of going out and buying one, he decided to make his own. And it was strange, little contraption indeed. It was in more like a tidy paddle that size of a sunglass lens. If we had stuck two together, it probably wouldn't have made a wicked set of sunglasses that you couldn't see much of. Anywho, once Leewick had his microscope ready, he went to town. He went looking at anything and everything he could with them, including his the gunk on his teeth. Yes, you heard that right. He actually discovered bacteria by looking at dental scrapings. Which, when you keep in mind, people didn't brush their teeth much of all back then. Oh, he must have a lovely bunch of bacteria to look at. When he wrote about his discovery, he didn't call them bacteria as we know them today, but he called them animalculies, because they looked like to anim little animals to him. While Litwick was staring at his teeth gunk, he was also sending letters to scientific college in England by the name of Robert Hooke. Hooke was a guy who really loved all aspects of science. So he dib dabbled a little bit of everything, including physics, chemistry, and biology. This thus is, thus is a hook from the term the cell, as he was looking at a piece of cork under the microscope. And, and the little chambers of the, he saw remember him of cells, of the rooms monks sleep in, in their monasteries. Think college dorms, but without TV computers and really annoying roommates. Hook was something in an unproductive scientist of his day, something he bought upon himself as he made the mistake of looking horns. With one of the most famous scientists ever, Sir Isaac Newton. Remember when I said Hook died in many different fields? Well, after Newton published a groundbreaking book um, and how planets move to gravity, Hook made the claim that Newton had been inspired by the Hook's work in physics. Newton, to say the least, did not like that which sparked a tense relationship between the two. It lasted even after Hook died. As quite as the book of Hook's research, as well as his only portrait, was misplaced due to Newton. Much of this was discovered, thankfully, after Newton's time, but not his portrait. So it's no sad we know what Robert Hook looked like. Fast forward to the 1800s, when two German scientists discovered something. To the today, we might find rather obvious, but helped tie together, that we know of as cell theory. The first scientist was Matthias Sheldon, a botanist who liked to study plants under the microscope. From his years of studying different plant species, it finally dawned on him that every single plant he had looked at were made of cells. At the same time, on the other end of Germany was Theodore Schwann, a scientist who not only studied slides of animal cells under the microscope, and got a special type of nerve cell made, named after him, but also invented re rebreathers for firefighters and had a kick and pair of sideburns. 
After studying animal cells for a while, he too came to the conclusion that all animals were made of cells. Immediately, he reached out vin via snail mail, as Twitter had yet to be invented. So other scientists working in the same field as Shion, who got back to him, that the two started working on the beginnings of the cell theory. A bone of contention arose between them. As for the last part of the cell theory, the cells came from pre-existing cells. Shion didn't exactly subscribe to that thought, as he swore cells came from free cell formation. Were, just, were they just kind of spontaneously crystallized into existence? That's when another scientist named Rudolf Verkru Ver stepped in with the research, showing that cells did come from other cells. Step research that was actually, hmm, how to put it, broad without permission, from a Jewish scientist by the name of Robert Remack, which led to more feuding scientists. Thus, the, from the teeth gung to torquing off Newton, it's crystallized into Schwann cells. The cell theory came to be an important part of the biology today. Now you, th now you think about it, all these, all the tension between the scientists is a lot like like celebrity feuds today, and that's what I have on cell theory. Back to Jed.